Yes, Ice Cube. Thank you so much for joining me on Capital Extra. How's it going? Pretty good, man. How you doing? Good. How is this crazy quarantine period treating you? Like it's like a movie. It's like a movie. It is, man. It's it's a it's a worldwide movie. Um, but I'm cool. You know, I'm hanging. You know, it's cool to be home with the fam and and to get into stuff that I need to do around the house. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm hanging. You know, making the most of it. That's good. Now, I really enjoyed this film. I'm not going to lie. So you played a music manager. You were managing a diva, but not only were you managing a diva, you as a music manager <laughs> were the diva too. Like, is this the reality of the music industry, I ask you? I mean, you got different kind of managers. You know, you got the ones that's quiet, uh, background guys that they don't even want to take a picture. And then you got guys like <laughs> Jack who think they the star, you know, they dress like they're going to the Grammys every day. And so that's the guy I wanted to play. I wanted to play the guy who, you know, if he had some talent, he wouldn't even need Grace Davis, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, you know, that that's really uh, a lot of managers out here wish they was out front and, uh, you know, they promote themselves just as much as they promote the acts that they're managing. And that's, that's Jack. Mm. So what was the atmosphere like on set? Because, you know, you had some big characters in this. Obviously, Tracy Ellis, um, Tracy Ellis Ross. Um, you had Dakota Johnson, like some big names. It was a it was a smooth, you know, it was kind of like a, a very soulful vibe on set. You know, it was no, um, you know, bickering. You know, we had a lot of uh, ladies working on the crew. You know, not only, at, you know, in the movie, but part of the crew, too. So for some reason, it created this calm kind of zen atmosphere. Um, and we just did our thing and um, all respected each other. And we all fell into our roles. So it was cool to see uh, everybody really buy into what they needed to do to make this movie great. Yeah. So in this in this quarantine period, have you... Have you been, you know, writing music? You've been, you know, in, in your home studio? What's the deal? Yeah, I've been, uh, you know, writing. You know, right now I'm getting my studio kind of redone at the house. So, you know, it's like in the middle of, uh, of construction. But hopefully they'll get that thing done real quick and I can jump back in there. You know, it seems like I'm going to be doing a lot of music, music this year just because you never know when things are going to open all the way back up. So, you know, I'm looking yep. forward to it, actually. I'm looking forward to having, you know, a nice amount of time to just focus on, you know, being fresh on the mic. Mm. Have you thought about working with some UK artists? Like, what, what UK artists do you, do you know about that you say, you know what, I'd like to work with this person in the future? Well, I need to get hooked up, man. I need somebody to let me know, you know what I mean, who I need to be working with, you know. I ain't even going to... Pretend, no, I just need somebody to be like, yo, Q, this the dude that, you know, he on that same level you on. You know, I wanna, I wanna rock with people that's on the same level and on the same tip I'm on. So you gonna have to hook me up, man. I'll have to hook you up, I'll have to hook you up. And Friday, we wanted Friday, we wanted it to happen yeah. so bad, the fourth one. Like, what happened, yeah. you tell me. Well, the movie company just, they dragged their feet. They dropped the ball. They uh, didn't green light the movie. You know, they had, they've been sitting on the movie for, now it's a year and some change, but, you know, they just never pulled the trigger. And so, you know, John Witherspoon passed away. He played Pops. And uh, so it's kind of hard to do that script. Got to write a whole new one. So it's damn near back to the drawing board. Okay, I hope it happens. Ice Cube, thank you so much for speaking to me on Capital Extra. No problem, man. I need I need to know some of them UK artists that I need to rock with now. Stormzy's a good one. I'll update you. Don't worry, I've got you. All right, I'm writing that down. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Kelvin, thank you so much for joining me on Capital Extra. How is lockdown life treating you? It's just such a crazy period, isn't it? It's, it's it's weird. It's weird. I did a movie called It Comes and I, sometimes I'm wondering, it's like, is this like manifesting itself? <laughs> I was like, we're just locked in our houses, like freaking out. <laughs> it's no literally problem. like a movie. 
Now, I loved um, your role in this film. Obviously, you were a performing artist, a musician, working with like an up-and-coming um, music producer. Um, what was that? How did you prepare for a role like this? Do you take singing classes? What is it? What do you do? Um, I did get a voice um, coach, and we worked a lot, and guitar lessons, because I don't play guitar. Um, and it was just, I, I just, I just had to, I was pulling from a lot of references of people that I thought, you know, I found charismatic and I thought could, I would like to see in like a, a, a romantic comedy space. And, you know, I kind of came to, I was like, who, who's interesting, who would have this more bohemian vibe. And I, I liked Anderson Pack, um, in terms of aesthetic and, and, and maybe, um, you know, stage presence. And I thought of Daniel Caesar in terms of, um, privacy and intimacy. I thought of Leon Bridges in terms of, 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 of vulnerability and, and all of these, like these, 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 um, really staple um, young up and coming black artists were just like how I kind of took my into it and just kind of listened to their stories and what made them get started and what are their insecurities and, and breaking down their lyrics. And that kind of helped me um, craft, craft the guy in terms of who he is as a human. The music was a completely separate thing that we got and got to do with the producers and stuff yeah. like that. So um, that's brilliant actually, because in this film you, obviously Dakota Johnson was playing you know, an up and coming music producer who was working with you, obviously, you know, who was an up and coming artist. Um, now you two were very, very close in this film. Very, you had a great working connection in this film, your characters anyways. Um, and it was interesting because you became so close. I don't want to give too much away, but what I want to ask is, you know, what do you think about mixing business with pleasure in the mm -hmm. music industry? Does mm -hmm. it work, industry. Elvin, or does it not work? to <laughs> happen you know I, I i think in the music industry or in any industry to be honest i don't really know if it if it really is, is sustainable um i think i think it's a it's, it's it's beautiful to have someone that understands what you do and can appreciate your art and your craft and i think that's what i think a lot of artists are looking for do you get me but it gets to a point where can it get competitive and can it get personal and mm. can it get, you know, can it turn to a lot of other things? Yes. Um, <laughs> but I do think if two individuals are trying to grow and trying to be conscientious of those things, it can work, you know, but most of the time people in the industry, especially musicians, aren't thinking about that. Musicians want to have a good time. <laughs> that's that part of it too. And so just keep that in mind before you walk through that door. <laughs> <laughs> now in this film as well, were two great stars, you know, Tracy Ellis Ross, Ice Cube. I can't imagine how great it must have been or what the atmosphere must have been like on set just working with them. It was crazy. It was crazy. I remember the first table read, um, Dakota walks in and I'm just like, oh my God, like, like just, wow, she's such a presence and she's so beautiful and like the wind's in her hair and I'm just like movie star. Then Tracy comes in. And she's in this jumpsuit, her afro's all out. And I'm like, that's Tracy Ellis Ross, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you <laughs> were starstruck. Yes, they're crushing it. And then I was like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm so, so happy to be here. And she's just like, yes, 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 I got to go. I'm doing Tyler, the creator's music video. I'm going to be late. I was like, finish me. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is crazy. This is crazy. But, you know, it's just the standard that they, they put themselves to and the work ethic that they have. It's just excellence. And um, it was just, it was, it, it, was a, it was truly a privilege to, to be there every day. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for speaking to me on Capital Extra. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Take care, man. Good. See ya. Hi, baby. Hello, Tracy Ellis Ross. Thank you so much for joining me on Capital Extra. How are you still managing to look this fabulous in isolation, baby? Well, Where I don't know. I think I should jump the question right back to you because you look fabulous <laughs> too. <laughs> Brilliant. Do you know what? This movie, I loved it. Loved it. I was going to ask you, you know, how did you prepare for this role? Obviously, you play a superstar, but Tracy, you are a superstar in real life, so it can't have been that hard to prepare for it. I love the way this interview is going. This is fantastic. <laughs> you are a doll. Um, you know, it was, it was a really fun preparation because some of the things I identified with and were very much the same. I love being on stage. I love gorgeous clothes, but I'd never played a singer before and I'm not a singer in real life. Um, although now maybe I am. Um, so <laughs> we'll get onto that. You are. Thank you. So, um, 
you know, there were, there were some things that I had to kind of stretch and that were challenging. And I really had to face the big fear of the singing. It was my biggest dream. And somewhere along the way, it turned into my biggest fear. And so that was the big leap for me. Uh, but other than that, this script was so beautifully written that it was absolutely um, easy to slide into this character. The words were on the page, who this woman was, um, the fact that she had a uh, part of herself that she has kept hidden um, and, um, and bigger and more dreams for herself, even though she'd reached a certain level in her career. And I felt it was so identifiable for so many people that um, let the world tell them who they should be when they really want to be somebody else. And I think both for both characters, both for Maggie and for Grace, the story of being able to pursue your dreams, even though the world is telling you um, not to. Mm, but you have basically pursued your dream. Like, I find it so crazy that you've always been scared to sing, but you've done so much in your career. So much singing? No. No, you've done so much in your career. Like so yes. many things which, you know, people could say is scary, but you know. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this, I, I have, I have a really good relationship with fear because a lot of what I do is scary. You know, when you host a live award show, you get scared. So sca being afraid doesn't scare me. Um, but there are still things that the idea of the criticism, the judgment, and particularly singing because of who my mom is, um, felt really daunting for me. And I think when something is that big of a dream and you leave it, hidden for so long, it only gets scarier and scarier. You know, they say like when you're young, it's easy to learn languages, there's no shame involved, you can try new things, it's easy to learn how to ski and swim and do all these things. But imagine like, let's just take swimming for an example. If you've waited until you're 40 years old to swim, like it's scary. Whereas if you're and I still can't swim and I'd be scared. It's fair enough. It's true. There you go. So singing <laughs> was my swimming. <laughs> but look, you know, you you have started started singing now, and you have, have. put out a song. Like, yeah. Are you relieved? How do you feel? I am not only relieved. I feel the most free I've ever felt in my life. Um, I feel like a part of me that was waiting to come out has finally joined the atmosphere. And um, so even in the midst of this pandemic, all of a sudden I am experiencing a kind of freedom that I've never had before, which is bizarre sitting in my house, um, <laughs> but really quite wonderful. And I also think it's really the message of the film and my own journey with this to be 47 years old and to try something new and to just take a big leap to me is, is really, um, it's been a great experience for me and it makes me want to encourage everybody to continue to pursue their dreams and not let age or anyone else's ideas of you stop you from going after what you want. That is beautiful. So I'm from a music radio station in London called Capital Extra. What is on your music playlist? What are you listening to right now? Oh my God, let's go in. Yeah, let's go in. Let's go in, hold on. Um, wait, um, my, where, oh, here it is, here's my Spotify. Did I turn everything on my phone off? My 2020, I have a playlist called 2020. And okay. Lucky Day, Black, mm -hmm. uh, Normani, there's that new Rihanna song, Daniel Caesar, Roddy Rich, Ooh. Sir, um, Party Next Door and Rihanna. I love that song, believe it. I love Rihanna. She's fabulous. You There's... need to collaborate with her one day. Look at you, just, just, yes, yes, name it. Name Rihanna. It. Um, what, what do you want to do it? Of course. Come on, I'll do anything with Rihanna. With Rihanna. I'll eat with her, I'll swim with her, I'll sing with her, <laughs> whatever. Let's make it happen. I love you so much. Take care. Thank you so much for speaking to me on Capital Extra. Thank mwah. you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs>